Well, everyone, while you enjoy your food, would you guys just try to listen along for our devotional message for today? 1 John 2, 15 through 17, it says, Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and the pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who d- does what pleases God will live forever. Amen. That is the scriptures. So we know as Christians that we have a friend. We have a friend, right? His name is Jesus. And we know that Jesus is with us, and Jesus loves us, and Jesus helps us through all that we go through. But we also know that we have an enemy, right? We have an enemy, and his name is Satan. So Jesus is the Lord in heaven. All authority has been given to him, and Satan is the prince of this world. He won control of it when he successfully tempted Adam and Eve in the garden. So so we face each day an ancient and deadly enemy. Today our topic is strategies of Satan. How to counter and defeat the evil one. That is what we're talking about today. How do we as Christians in the world live out this calling? How do we fight and win our battles? And we are about to find out how. Yes, we are. So, the world, the world, much of the world is at war with Christianity and seeking to subvert it. The church, us, the church is us. The church is not a building. The church is essentially the forward front of Christ's expanding kingdom. The chief general and strategist of this expansion of the church is the Lord Holy Spirit. He is the strategist battling our enemy, Satan. And Satan is attempting to subvert us, diminish us, discredit us, and destroy us. And Satan has a framework of attacks that he will levy against us. None of them are new. I'll just tell you that. There is nothing new under the sun. These are the same attacks he's levied against humanity since the beginning of time. Satan's chief weapons are temptations and lies. Temptations and lies. That's what Satan likes to attack us with over and over. Temptations and lies. And as Christians, we must be shrewd, cunning, innocent, and brave. Because we have an enemy. And he'll take any opening that we give him. So let's look at at a few of the enemy's tactics to destroy Christians and see how Jesus helps us overcome these attacks and counter them in his great power. The first one is pretty obvious and pretty clear. We all know it so well. Whenever the Bible talks about it, it talks about sin, especially the New Testament, it says this one first, sexual immorality. Oh, God knows us so well, does he not? God knows what we do, what, how we think, and what appeals to us. Sex. For men, for w- women, is a weak point for us. And it is tough. Time and again in the New T- Testament, that is the first sin listed. Think of how destructive these things can be. What, what do you mean? Absolutely. That, that's why God made sex for marriage, to be enjoyed in marriage. Lots of sex in marriage. Yes, yes. So, these things, when they're used outside of marriage, when it's just one after another, we think they're going to give us pleasure, but they actually take and hurt us. They actually make us feel empty. They actually make us feel lost. The more we do it, the more it hurts, right? The more empty we feel. And it's, it's very destructive. And it, it, it's interesting. It's a door that, that once opened is hard to close again, right? Once it's opened, it is hard to close. Yet Jesus breaks every chain. Jesus breaks every chain. It doesn't matter what we've done. It does not matter. He will break every chain of sin in our lives. So we must pray and cry out to him and seek him in this area. And then get to work with whatever tools we need to win these battles. And there are tools out there, books we can read, 
counselors we can visit, people we can talk to to seek healing from these issues. And we can heal. Jesus transforms us. What we thought was impossible by ourselves is suddenly done in Christ. Boom. Done. So, defeated in Christ. Next one. This one I'm not good at. Going too fast. Oh, yes. Too much of a good thing. Oh, yes. This can happen. This happens all the time. We start doing good stuff. We start doing more and more good stuff. And pretty soon we're so busy all the time with good stuff that we start to get burned out. It's true. It's, it's, it's true. So maybe we're doing great. We're living the dream. We're loving people and Christ is changing our life. So Satan sees this and attacks with a different tactic. He seeks to burn us out. Too much good stuff. And pr- pretty soon it piles up and pretty soon we're exhausted. You know? Pretty soon we're stressed out, depressed. It's, it's, it's very... That's why we're all here. Yeah. But it's very So too much of a good thing, canon will destroy us. Don't be a workaholic. Christ saves us from this by giving us freedom to slow down. Christ invites us to remove things from our schedule, to relax and enjoy time with family. Christ invites us to slow down, seek him, and know peace. Peace. Christ offers us peace. He says, slow down. Enjoy life. It doesn't have to be a workaholic nightmare. You can have peace. Yeah. Next area. We need to get real about prayer and Bible study. It's 100% necessary or you will fail in the Christian life. Martin Luther said prayer to a Christian is like breathing. If you don't pray, you'll suffocate. Guaranteed. Jesus invites us to ask him for help in this area. I struggled so hard with this because I, I, I can go, go so fast, you guys. I, I'm on the computer. I got the TV on. I got the music on. You know, I just got a thousand things going at once, multitasking. And it's just hard to slow down and have enough discipline to read my Bible at night and pray and, and, and enjoy a good devotional reading in the morning. So what I do, I just pray to God and I say, look, Lord, I can't do this. I need you to make it possible. I need you to make it possible, Lord. And after many petitions, it all becomes possible. Pretty soon I'm praying. I'm reading my Bible. I'm like, wow, I thought I couldn't do this. But I ask the Lord and suddenly he he makes it possible. that's, That's just basically Christianity in a nutshell is that I can't. Jesus can. I'll let Jesus completely change my life by his power. So I've tried myself. I've tried to really flex my muscles and be like, I'm going to force things to go my way. It never happens. Only in Christ is there strength to overcome all these issues and be free and live a free life. Next one, garbage of the soul. I like this, garbage of the soul. You guys got any garbage in your soul? Would Jesus pour garbage into his soul? I doubt it. Would Jesus... Take some garbage and just dump it on himself? No way! Why would he do that? He would never do that. So why do we? Why do we do that? Why do we watch shows like Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead, all these violent, sexually explicit shows? Why do we go see movies like Fifty Shades of Grey? Why read trashy novels that put strange ideas into our minds? We're called to purity. That's where Jesus calls us. And as part of a Wesleyan holiness movement... I feel that it's doubly important for us to watch what we, what we pour into our souls. You know? Clear it out. You can change all that stuff. Shut off that stupid show. Turn off the music. Get rid of the cable TV. Holiness is what Christ calls us to. I'm not trying to judge anyone. I, I promise you. Christians can get really upset about this t- topic of what t- TV shows they watch. I'm so stupid. <laughs> Maybe it's a soft spot for us, but but we should address it. We should think about it. Jesus calls us to a higher standard. Turn off the rated R movies, the sex scenes, the bloody violence. If you turn off that spout, you'll find that pretty soon 
you start to live a more pure life, you know? And there's other things to turn on, like a good sermon, a podcast, something with a good message that fills you with joy instead of something violent, you know? Next one, doubting God's goodness. This is one of Satan's favorite tactics. He's done it twice with two big names, Eve and Jesus. He dared to suggest to Eve, remember this in the garden, that God was hiding some blessing from them when God had commanded Adam and Eve to not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan suggested that Eve would become like God if she ate from it. He put the lie into her mind that God wasn't really good or true. Eve believed the lie. When Jesus faced down Satan in the wilderness, remember this? The third temptation Satan offered was to give the world to Jesus. And in this, Satan attempted to call into question God's goodness of sending Jesus to the cross. But Jesus knew better. He did not blow it like Adam and Eve. He said, no, I, I am going to the cross because... Because, because because at the cross we'd all be saved, right? When terrible things happen in our lives, do we ask, how can a good God allow this to happen? Or do we dare to trust in God even when we don't understand what's going on? That is the question, isn't it? Can we have such radical faith and trust in our Lord that we know his goodness remains even in the face of terrible evil? Yes. Jesus calls us to trust in his character. Toying with old sins. This is my final one for today. So so we put our old lives behind us. But the enemy will bring back old things we struggled with and try to entice us. Not to completely jump in again, but the enemy invites us to begin to flirt with old sins. And the flirtation, as harmless as it may seem, begins to crack that door open again, right? Right? And over time, the old sin starts to gain power in the mind once again. So don't open that door. Do not open the the door that you've closed. Keep that door locked, bolted, and if necessary, pour cement in the entryway. Because we do not want to open that door again, do we? Because Jesus Christ has set us free from all sin. Sometimes we sit in the prison cell of sin even when the door is hanging open, right? Right? We just sit there, and we won't leave, even though the door is open. Jesus breaks every chain. We're free. We can walk out the door right now. Walk out that door of sin. Let us not return to to the trough of sin as the dog returns to its vomit. We are called to live in the Spirit and not gratify the desires of the flesh. So in conclusion, I'd refer you guys to Genesis chapter 3. Study the fall. Look at that over the next week, Genesis 3. And then look at how Jesus dealt with the evil one in Matthew chapter 4. Because Jesus succeeded where Adam and Eve failed. Remember, we have a great, glorious, risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything that's going on in our lives, any pain we're in, any suffering, any sin, he will break those chains. He will set us free. We can always turn to Jesus any time. Any time, you guys, any time you're hurting, it doesn't matter where you are, if you're by the river, if you're at home, if you're hurting, if you're sick, if you're lost, if you're contemplating suicide, if you're depressed, all you've got to do is say one name, Jesus Christ. There is, there is power in that name, the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. All you've got to do is say, Jesus, help me. Jesus Christ, you're my Savior. Jesus, I can't do this anymore. And he sets us free. And it doesn't matter what we've done. It does, it does not matter. You could have committed a billion sins. Boom, they're all gone. And you turn to Jesus. Anytime. He's waiting there with his hands and arms wide open. Like the prodigal son welcoming his wayward son home again. He's just saying, J- just come home. Just come home. Was the father standing at the end of the driveway saying, Oh, look at you. Oh, look at you. You're going to come back. No, he wasn't saying a word. He was just full of love saying, Come home. I love you. Come home. That's it. Come home. So in conclusion, we can live this life in Christ and the Spirit, 
we are going to be attacked by the evil one, by Satan. We have an enemy, but we have a Savior who's much greater than our enemy. Amazing. We can stand against any temptation. Oftentimes, this life is like a battle. This world is warfare. But we can do this because Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior forever. Amen. Amen.